Hi, this is Adam with GVTV, here on the couch with the machine of machinima, the artist of Rooster Teeth, the one and only Monty Ohm. And Monty, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing very good. That's good to hear. Now we're here day three of RTX. Pretty much everything's closing down, all the final panels. You've debuted a lot of big stuff today, and just how do you feel about everything? Just Really, really good. Uh, I mean, it's... The stay, there's still a lot for today. I mean, I kind of want to see a lot of the other people's panels too. Like Game Grumps is here. I love them, and uh, some of my own guys, like the uh, you know RTAA, and you know, uh, and also maybe some cast members I haven't seen yet that work for RVB. They might want to poach for Ruby. So maybe maybe I'll go to their signings and be like, hey, you, I have some ideas. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Machinima is a funny thing. I mean, even the animation side of things, I kind of consider a machine because I give the states, like the state, the states machines of a game, to my own production and try to think of everything in a modular sense, similar to how Machinima is done. It's fun. It's fun because there's a formula to it, but leaving it at formula doesn't um, like won't make it, you know, creative. So, but then the creative side gets liberated from writing and expression and comedy. So, like. Me animating a fight scene, I'm very formulaic. I know how to edit. I know how to throw what punches, what kicks. I know what my library is. But then that liberates the side of it where I was like, well, they could be punching and kicking each other, but maybe they'll do it on top of a falling platform or on the back of a moving truck or something. Or, you know, I'll have uh, giant monsters instead of, you know, it, it just it just really liberates it. Yes, and you get so many amazing shots with just using that with animation. You've always said that with animation you can get the shots that you can't get in real life. Has there ever been any fight scenes that you just don't feel come together and that you just, you know, let's scrap this, let's reshoot it? If something, if something starts, if something is not coming together, you know, I, I keep my edit open and I look at it in, in, in its wide format and say, how does it fit within the episode? Is it telling the proper story? Am I getting the point across? If it's not, I start making cuts. I have some fight scenes where it's, it's good storytelling, but it might not be good storytelling right now. But I really want this for the two characters. I want Blake and Yang to do something together to show them as a cohesive unit. I'm like... I'll do this now, but I have more for it later. I'm, it might be la later, might be episode twelve. Later, might be two years from now. I mean, but this has been constant. I have, I have scenes from pre Ruby that I'm using now. I have, like shotgun nunchucks was an idea I had before Ruby ever existed. I had animated it during uh, between season nine and season ten of Red vs. Blue, and I knew I'd use it for something. That animation had been sitting there for almost two years, and I'm like, we're, and we're at episode sixteen of Ruby. And I'm like, let's just use this now. Because Sun was there, and I knew I wanted him to have the shotgun nunchucks. And it's just like, I, I mean, I would like this for a later fight, but I need this now. It's appropriate for now. And I, could, I know I could come up with something else later. So it's always when it's appropriate. And it just looks amazing. The shotgun nunchucks are the most badass <laughs> weapon I've ever seen. Probably one of my favorite characters. Especially, you know, when you just see turns them into the bow staff. So rem reminiscent of the Monkey King. Mm. Do you find yourself pulling from a lot of old school, you know, kung fu films? Oh, yeah. I'm such a 90s kung fu kid. Like Iron Monkey, Fist of Legend, and all the Once Upon a Time in China's. Uh, lots of Jackie Chan movies, more than I can. Who am I? Is, you know, really good and the Drunken Masters. Uh, there might be a little bit of the kicky guy at the end, the Drunken Master and Mercury, if you noticed. I mean, I always like those fights where there's a guy that did, there's those guys that are so good and over specialized, but then the very versatile person gets over their over specialization because it breeds weakness. So like, but I it's also really cool because I like those fights. Like at that one fight in Who Am I would. One kicky guy, one punchy guy taking on the one, you know, universal guy. And it was like, that guy's kicks are so good. I like this form. I like Sanji in One Piece. I'm also a big anime guy. Like Sanji in One Piece, his kicks are animated so beautifully. There was a long time where I'm looking at Mercury and I'm like, how do I get his silhouette on his leg for those kicks? But I still need a weapon at the end of it. But the weapon breaks the silhouette. And it was a lot of back and forth. It was like... We'll throw the weapon on and we'll figure out how the silhouette works later. Because if you look at Sanji's kicks, his leg is just a long black line and that's it. So, And then, you know, the idea of upping it a notch by adding these rocket booster gun feet thing that he has. It's like, 
we obviously, you know, it's in vain with Ruby to show to show momentum used differently. And so he'll have moves that I've had in my head well before Mercury ever existed. And you just have that fluidity just in the movie, especially, I mean, harkening back to your, I think your fourth and final trailer, Yang, Yellow, just, it looked amazing. The fight scene between her and two club goers. Yeah. Just the foot movement in there was amazing. Was that all motion capture? Was that that was actually me. Like, I actually went up, I pulled up Who Am I and Drunken Master and any other scene where it was just like guys doing really good footwork. And I'm like, I'm just, I, I was just like, you know, I, and oh, even like characters from video games, like Hwarang from Tekken, uh, Bic from Tekken, uh, Rig from the Dead or Alive 5, all the kicky characters. I'm like, okay, the footwork is cool and I like the, the, the movement. It's like, there's actually a thing. Now, there's a little, it's not really spoilers, but it's a little bit of a little bit Easter egg. Yang had the most trouble fighting Melanie in the yellow trailer because that's her biggest weakness is kicking characters. So if Yang and Ma Mercury ever get into a fight, there might be some trouble because, you know, now you've got a kicking character with guns on his feet. And I know that there's some stuff from Mel Melanie that will transfer over to Mercury for storytelling standpoints. There might be even some of that little Easter egg in the black trailer because I started putting the stuff in really early about the person they're next to, how, like, how did this affect them as a person? We'll definitely be looking forward to that one. Now, just final question. I've been following you on Facebook for quite a while, just seeing all your development. You seem to open up to a lot of cosplayers, you know, showing them, okay, here's this person's costume, here's the front, the back, the side, here's every angle. Do you like doing that? Just, you I know, like giving it open? Because a lot of studios don't do that. They're just like, oh, you, you got to watch it all just to see the guy. We're, we're, I think we're, at a, we're past an age where this stuff is so sacred because people will find it anyways, and we're past the age where keeping it sacred is good for your product. Honestly, we're in an age where sharing, being uh, more universal and keeping your stuff open to people is a lot better because uh, technol technology has liberated us in a way where guys like me can pick up a program and make an, a lengthy sequence that actually has storytelling to it where previously you had to be part of a studio to actually do this sort of thing. So regardless of whether or not you open it up to them, people will find a way to do it. So it's better to just ad, uh, you know, uh, admit to it and just you know, actually go for it rather than try to prevent all this stuff. Like it's, it's, it's much better to embrace it, honestly, than try to, than try to just you know, defy the progress of what things... Rooster Teeth is a progressive company, quite honestly. They're very big on community and that's the, one of the things that sustains them is that we're all just people at the end of the day. One of the things that people forget that even in these things, these shows that we've watched in the past, we worship them as you know creations that seem like they're made by these unattainable people. They're really not. They're made by normal people every day. We're everyday people as well. We just have we have I, we have ideas of our own, and we now have the ability to without needing the backing of millions of dollars and, and some sort of corporation to do it. And it looks amazing. You just see all the cosplay. Do you kind of, yeah. you feel it, you feel it in your heart like, I, this is... Cosplays, there's toys getting made. People in the canal own the plushies. Cosplays again, because I love cosplay. I think everyone has a lot of fun doing it. And I not only do I love the cosplays, I love the interpretive cosplays. Because every time I've made a cosplay, it was never actually the, a direct copy of something, but more like an homage to it. And I like that. Uh, like, it's been... a a mantra of just my creative process to take something and build on top of it because you have an established idea and the potential to make it better in a way that much like us we're busy I can make the show but I can't make everything else to expand the show because well it's just I don't have the time but I'm absolutely okay with someone take making their own version their alternative universe version their age version their gender bent version their prequel version whatever whatever they want to do with it by doing that that means they had to research it and understand the character in, in order to homage it to it in their own way well once again ruby looks great red versus blue as always just so beautiful love the fight scenes and the music just added to it my god just powerful work i love it uh monty thank you very much thank we got to wrap up here Absolutely. it has been an absolute pleasure thank sir you. that's adam and monty ohm here at rtx 2014 in austin texas